What's good, Farside TV? This is Cypher, and we are here, and it is WrestleMania season. We're only two weeks removed from the biggest event in sports entertainment, WrestleMania 40, right? So that's why we're here. It's two weeks away, and I want to give you all my predictions early. I know we're way too early, but we're really not, because although the event is in two weeks, most events like this, especially with the WWE and how they like to promote things, should actually be finished. But I know we still have more matches to add to the match card. So far, we have 10 confirmed matches. Uh, so those are the ones I'm going to be uh, doing a, a prediction video on. But this video, as of the making of today, uh, SmackDown comes on tonight. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be more people uh, added to the card. But for right now, we're going to get... Uh, doing, we're gonna do the card that we got so far. So that's where we're at. If you don't know me, I'm Cypher, aka DJ, aka the man that listens to music so you don't have to, and reviews videos. And right now it's WrestleMania season, so we all WWE right now. That's where we at. That's what we do. If you don't mind, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm sure you'll like all the content here, and it's a chance it's a channel for everybody. So that's why we're here. So I'm gonna cut to the chase. Let's get it. All right. So the first match is. Well, I'm going to at least uh, predict is Io Sky versus Bailey. Who's going to win with that uh, for the Women's uh, WWE Championship? So, uh, I think it's pretty simple. I think Bailey has to win. And we haven't had a solid, clean story built from scratch like this in a long time. Uh, Bailey started damage control, she made Io Sky. Uh, even though she's already been established, she reinvented herself as a new member as Damage Control with Bailey. It was a failing group uh, with them two and Dakota Kai, and they ended up adding more people to try to make it, you know, more popping. And it didn't really work out. Um, so the fact that Eel Sky's champion now, Bailey has been fighting tooth and nail to get them over. She's finally gotten them over in a way. Um, and now that they've turned their back on her, it's a redemption story. It's it's it's, it's a very it's a very classic WWE tale. And I think with as much work as Bailey's put into the story and everything else and her constant, consistent injuries to where she couldn't showcase everything she can do, I think she deserves it. She should have this. Um, I think she should definitely beat Io. Now, will she is a different story. I don't know if she will or not because I don't know how they're going to tell that tale. They haven't really built Io enough to make her seem like just this unbeatable force either. She's beaten big names, Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair, etc. But it doesn't feel like she's just a supreme reigning champion. It feels like she's holding the belt for Bailey until she gets it. So if that's the case, it is what it is. But I definitely look forward to seeing Bailey win that, and I think they're going to go full circle with that. Hopefully this doesn't damage, haha, <laughs> damage control and to where, you know, EO Sky isn't as big or popping as she was just because she loses the belts to Bailey. Uh, but I think that, I think that's where they're going with it. Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch for the World Women's Championship. Uh, again, easy for me. Rhea Ripley, she has to win. I think she's going to win. Uh, Becky Lynch doesn't need to win. Um, they need to have big name matches. I get it. So that's why they have Becky Lynch there in the first place. But... I know they're trying to build Becky to be this underdog uh, person that's trying to get this championship, but everybody loves mommy. Everybody wants Rhea Ripley to win. I mean, that's it. She gets pops. She's getting pops over Becky. Becky's saying her long and passionate speeches, but it's not really hitting the same. Everybody wants Rhea Ripley to win. I think she's going to win. Uh, that way she would have held the belt for exactly a year, and then we can move on from that program. Um because, you know, yeah, that's the story. Becky Lynch feels like she uh, has to climb this big mountain, which is Rhea Ripley. Uh, but in reality, uh, Becky Lynch is already accomplished. She's established. She doesn't need it. And I think Rhea Ripley, uh, I think it would be a good notch in her belt to have beaten Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch, both at WrestleMania. And who knows, maybe next year she'll beat Bayley uh, at WrestleMania. And maybe by then, Sasha Banks uh, might be back in the WWE and she might beat her at WrestleMania. And then she'd be all the four horsemen. It's not for four horse women. It's not too convoluted or too far out there because Undertaker's done it. He's beaten every member of Evolution at WrestleMania, so it's it's not too far fetched. So I think I think Rhea Ripley's going to take it. So we got Gunther and Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship, a match that people weren't really expecting, nor do I think they just want like that. Um, so hear me out. 
I think everybody, I'm sure everybody, 95% of the general public that watches sports entertainment wanted Chad Gable to win this because, of course, we did. It was perfect for the story. This was Chad Gable's match to win. He's been going against Guther all year, uh, and he's been having the most impressive bout with him amongst all his competitors, uh, even above Sheamus to me. I think him and Sheamus had a, a slobber knock, but it was different. Uh, but... I think Chad Gable definitely deserved that spot, but he didn't get it. Sami Zayn got it. Uh, Sami Zayn has a story where he's been on a huge losing streak, not really being able to find himself on the WrestleMania card. This way he's done it. And people aren't turning on Sami, but it's just not the same. They already had their story ready with Gable. Uh, but I'm sure WWE has their eyes wide open on this, and they've seen the reactions, and that's why they've gotten Chad Gable more involved in this uh, match that's going to happen. So you never know. This video is before Monday Night Raw, and they might they might do something where Chad gets added. I don't know. But as far as who's going to win between those two, I know WWE likes to do cathartic things like um, have things relate to past events. And so they can correlate with future events, you know. So last year, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens dethroned the Usos, who were the longest reigning tag champs ever. So now this year, I wouldn't be surprised if they had Sami Zayn beat Gunther, who was the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion ever. That's just how they that's how they do things. They like those those patterns. Um, but on the flip side, whereby thinks that he's gonna finally lose it, Gunther, he might just win. And then Chad Gable is right. He feels like Sami Zayn can't beat Gunther. So it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of in the air. I think more so Sami would win, just based on how they like to do things. Um, but I think it would be better and more of a tragedy if Gunther wins and still beats Sami. And Sami can't beat him, like Chad said. And Chad ends up beating him instead, maybe later on. But I don't know. Um, as far as how they're going to do it, though, Biggest stage, biggest WrestleMania ever. Gunther has nothing to lose technically. He can move on to bigger things like the world title. I think Sami Zayn is going to take it. So, Sami Zayn for that one. Okay, the. Golly, I think this is a six team tag team ladder match for the undisputed tag titles. Um, whew, Judgment Day got a, a big order on their hands. I don't know who's going to win because. There hasn't been much build. There's been different teams trying to take it from them, but there hasn't really been much build as far as uh, which team makes the most sense to actually get it from them. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't I don't know who's going to do it. There's still plenty of other um, candidates for this. Uh, we already know Judgment Day is defending it. Uh, the only ones we have so far, as per before SmackDown tonight, are, of course, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, DIY, Awesome Truth, The New Day, and then we still need two more teams. So uh, those qualifying matches will come on tonight. And to be honest, that's another reason why I did this video now. I don't think it matters. I think they're going to have a, this is their, this is their way of having like a showcase. Because I'm pretty sure, like I don't know the matchups for tonight, but I'm pretty sure Street Profits going to be in there. They're going to win. They're going to move on to go to the ladder match. And as far as the other team, I don't know. I, I, I don't really know. I, I don't really think it just matters like that, you know, as far as who's going who's gonna to do that. Because um, I think the judgment they are going to retain. I think they're going to have a full sweep. Uh, I think it's going to be a Rhea Ripley keeping her title. And I think it's going to be Damian Priest and Finn Balor keeping theirs. Why not have a whole sweep? Have the judgment day win for WrestleMania. I'm good with it. So... I think they're going to retain, but I know that's going to be a fire match. That's a lot of people in one ladder match. That's crazy. Uh, next is the United States title. With KO, Logan Paul, Randy Orton. Who's going to win it? Logan Paul. Now, here's the thing. It really doesn't matter who wins. This is more of a showcase, too, only because... Logan Paul can lose that title, and it's not gonna it's not gonna change a thing. It's not gonna make anything happen. Uh, it kind of tells the story of if they are gonna have him there for the long run or not. Because if he loses it, then there really wasn't too much of a point of him having it, and it was more so like a marketing idea to get more eyes on the belt. Uh, but if he keeps it, that tells the universe that okay, he's gonna be around and he's gonna be like a WWE guy because he's holding on to this title. And it's got to be for a reason. 
So I think it depends on which way they want to go with that. I think they're going to go for the long run and let Logan Paul retain and probably uh, let KO take the pin. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to build a, a rivalry that's already kind of been started at Elimination Chamber, but really, really cement that rivalry uh, uh, with Randy Orton and Logan Paul to where they probably clash together at some point, maybe at SummerSlam or maybe even, even before that. We don't know. But I think Logan Paul is going to retain. I think KO is going to take the pin. That's how it's going to go. But I know it's going to be a very entertaining match. Funny. Funny. It's going to be good and hard-hitting, but it's going to be funny, to be honest. So I think Logan Paul is going to take that one. Next one, L.A. Knight versus A.J. Styles. Um, L.A. Knight has to win. Otherwise, we we failed him. He wasn't on the card last year, except for, what, that Slim Jim Bow Royal or something? I don't know. Uh, whatever. He wasn't really on the mainstay on the card last year. Um, so they, they missed that opportunity. Um, he should. He's definitely going to be on it this year. And it's, and it's a marquee match against A.J. Styles, a, a, a ballot Hall of Famer multi-time world champion, world-renowned sports entertainment master. Like, people look at this like it's, it's not a big deal for LA Knight, but it really is. It doesn't have to be for a title. As long as he has a marquee match, that's all that matters. AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, those guys are known for having marquee matches at Mania for non-titles. So it's fine. And they're all bona fide Hall of Famers, so it's okay for him to have this match. It's good. Because if he wins, which he will, then now just push him more to that main event scene that maybe uh, some people thought he wasn't going to be in. I personally thought he was going to be in the U.S. title match against Logan Paul because they wouldn't give him the next best thing besides the world title. But to me, I think this match with AJ Styles is even more important than a U.S. title match, to be honest, because it solidifies him as a main uh, main event superstar. So I think it's fine, and I think it's going to be a really good one. Uh, AJ Styles has gotten swole lately, so Styles is uh, going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and lifting him up just as much as he's going to be lifting him up. So it's going to be a dope match, but LA Knight for the win. Uh, Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Uh, Jay Uso. We're going to have Jay Uso win because if Jimmy wins, then that just doesn't make sense I mean it it can if the right story's told but the way they've been telling the story Jimmy's been a thorn in Jay's side for months uh, he's cost him literally literally every championship he's been involved in uh, even just regular matches and it would just wouldn't make sense for Jimmy to win it would be like throwing salt in the wound we have to have Jay win he has to move on from this period there's, there's, there's no going back um, so I think Jay's going to win. I think it's going to be a long, long, great, grueling match. But I think Jay's going to win. Uh, they've been wanting to have this match for years. They've been talking about it. I think it's going to happen, so why not? So Jay and Jimmy for, for, for that match. I think it's going to be Jay, to be honest. Um, and hopefully they'll treat it like uh, Dustin Rhodes, Cody Rhodes match in the AEW where they were just going and going and, and bleeding and, and bruised and broken and embraced at the end. I think that's going to happen. I don't know, not the, not the former, because I know other WWE does. They like to keep things pretty PG for the most part with matches. But uh, as far as the latter, I think they're gonna embrace each other at the end, uh, give a deep hug, like man, we did it. We maybe a little tear or something. You never know. Uh, Jimmy Uso makes his way back to getting his mind together, and um, I think he's gonna come around. So Jay Uso for the win. I'm down with it. So then we have the tag match between Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes versus The Rock and Roman Reigns. Travel cheat, Roman Reigns. So this one's going to be tricky because everything is connected to this match. This match determines this match, which determines the other match, which determines the former match, which determines the latter match. It all is connected. So it's hard to say who's really just going to win from this and why they should. Personally, I didn't... I thought that at first I, I, I thought that Cody and Seth were going to lose. At first, I thought the Rock and Roman were going to win this one um, until like recently when I thought about the other parts of this equation. Because you got to remember, all four of these people involved can't look weak. They all have to look strong. They all have other matches. Uh, so it's it's except for the Rock, of course, but. We don't know about that. So it's 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 one of those things. So 
Seth Rollins, so okay, so since we're talking about that, let's tie into the next match after that. Uh, Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the world title. Seth Rollins has been carrying that world title since he got it. And he's been making that workhorse title. Um, he's put prestige behind it. It's a big deal, right? So Seth is going to do that. And uh, he's, he's done that. And he's going to go against McIntyre and defend it the next night. Seth can't lose twice. That's, that's what clicked in my head recently. Seth can't lose twice. So there's no... We already assume that he's going to lose to Drew McIntyre because it would make no sense for him to win after he's already beaten McIntyre. And all this, all these promos, all these big nets, all this trolling, it was for nothing. So Drew McIntyre has to win that match. And I think he will win that match. So he's going to be our new World Heavyweight Championship champion. So since, he's going to lose, since Seth is going to lose there, we can't have him lose twice. So Seth has to win at Mania. So what does that mean? That means that Roman will lose. I mean, will win that night. So we think, okay, it's bloodline rules. The Rock and Roman, which The Rock doesn't want to lose. He doesn't want to. He's, he's going he's gonna to win. He's not going to not get over. The Rock is going to win. Cody's going to lose. Seth is going to lose. Rock's going to win. Roman's going to win. So they both have two losses on each side, or two losses, two wins, right? So night two is going to be Roman and Cody. And Seth and and Drew, Seth already won one time. Let me wait. I think I messed that up. Okay, let me let me go back. Right. Wow, I just broke my own code. So Seth can't lose twice, but neither can Roman. <laughs> okay, okay. So now we have to break down who can't lose twice the most. <laughs> okay, so. That means I have to include the very last match, which is Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns with a big belt, the undisputed title. So, I think what has to happen is Cody Rhodes has to beat Roman Reigns, right? Drew McIntyre has to beat Seth Rollins, right? So, Roman, I have all four of those guys between Roman, Cody, Rock, and Seth. Roman can't lose twice. That's not happening. If he's going to win that big, if he's going to lose the biggest one, he can't lose the one before. That's not going to happen. So Roman and Rock are definitely winning that. So it's it's still the same prediction. It's just Seth will lose twice then. That means he has to lose twice or it's got to be some type of angle. Because Cody can lose here, but then he has to win the big one the next night. Roman can win here, but he has to lose the big one the next night. Seth is going to lose the big one the next night. So you would think he'd have to win on night one, but that's impossible because of all the other factors. So that means Seth has to lose two nights in a row for this to work. And out of the four guys involved, since he's the least over, I think they're willing to make that sacrifice. So that's my final word on that. Seth and, Seth and Cody lose night one to Roman and Rock. So there's bloodline rules for night two, for Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes... They're going to have their match. Drew McIntyre beats Seth. Cody Rhodes beats Roman Reigns. And we have a new undisputed world champion. And that's it. That's it. I finally figured it. I cracked the code. So once WrestleMania comes around, we'll put my video up compared to the results and see how much I got right or wrong. Because it's, it's looking pretty plain as day to me, but I just don't know. The way things go there, you just don't know. So I'm putting it out there. That's my guess. That's my bid. And we're going to see how things go. So that's it for that video, y'all. Thank you guys for watching so much. Thank you for, for for being around, hanging out, getting new followers, new subscribers, new people to network with. Uh, just just new everything, you know what I'm saying, for the new year 2024. New avenues, crossing uh, barriers, breaking borders. Switch that around, crossing borders, breaking barriers, you know what I mean. Uh, putting some WWE on here. Um, getting some more entertainment values. Like I said, this is Farside TV, so everything's on here. It's music, animation. Uh, TV, movies, everything is here. This is a, a one-stop shop for everybody. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Consider subscribing. And uh, hang out with me. Sometimes I stream and um, do videos like this, you know. So you want me, if you want to know why I've been absent, that's for another video. We ain't going to talk about that right now. <laughs> but we're going to get right into it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you around for the next vid. And... Peace.